Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Yan Yu, founder of the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease. Today we're going to be talking about secondary hemostasis, the coagulation cascade. Before we begin, you can help support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. Thanks. And with that, let's get started. When we talk about hemostasis, that's basically the process of preventing blood loss. And it's always an equilibrium between how fluid the blood is versus how much it tends to clot. Now we need to differentiate between primary and secondary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis is the formation of the platelet plug, which is not the focus of this slide today. Secondary hemostasis is stabilization of the platelet plug via coagulation systems in the plasma. It occurs only at the site of injury, and so the clotting occurs only where it's needed. There's two pathways that lead to the formation of fibrin, which results in coagulation. They all involve clotting factors. The main one is the extrinsic pathway, otherwise known as the tissue factor pathway. When vascular endothelial cells become damaged, that exposes tissue factor, otherwise known as factor 7, which is a serum clotting factor that normally floats around in your serum. They become exposed to the damaged stromal fibroblasts, and that results in the activation of tissue factor. Activated tissue factor is also known as thromboplastin. What's not shown here is that tissue factor also activates factor 7 into factor 7A. The A stands for activated. I should note here that the asterisk indicates that these processes are vitamin K dependent. For more about the function of vitamin K, see our slide on vitamin K deficiency. Back to the extrinsic pathway, the tissue factor, factor 7A complex, then activates factor 10, leading to thrombin formation. Now for the intrinsic pathway, otherwise known as the contact activation pathway, it starts with trauma to the blood vessels, exposing the blood to the collagens of the blood vessel wall. Factor 12, floating around in the plasma, after contacting the vessel's collagen, becomes activated to factor 12A with the help of multiple contact factors, such as high molecular weight kininogen and also precalocrine. Factor 12A then activates factor 11 into factor 11A. Factor 11A then activates factor 9 into factor 9A. Simultaneously, factor 8 becomes activated by thrombin into factor 8A. Factor 8A then complexes with factor 9A to activate factor 10. Now both of these two processes, the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, converge into the common pathway. And that involves the activation of factor 10 into factor 10A. And factor 10A, through a process mediated by calcium and factor 5A, cleaves prothrombin factor 2 into thrombin, factor 2a. I should note here that factor 10 is a protease that usually has a low basal rate of prothrombin catalysis. Factor 10a only becomes an efficient prothrombin activator once it complexes with factor 5a, with factor 5a greatly increasing the rate at which the factor 10a protease produces thrombin. Thrombin then cleaves fibrinogen, factor 1, into fibrin, factor 1a. It's the fibrin strands that then precipitate on top of the platelet plug and result in coagulation, the process of fibrin clot formation. Note that all of these clotting factors are just basically floating around in the bloodstream, in the serum, waiting to be activated. We have these memory aids that you can read about that will help you remember which clotting factor is which. Finally, where this is clinically relevant is in the measurements that we have to check for abnormalities in the clotting pathways. The extrinsic pathway is measured by the prothrombin time test. The prothrombin time is measured from the time that tissue factor is inserted into the mixture to the time the clot forms. Deficiencies in the extrinsic pathway will result in an increased prothrombin time. The prothrombin time test takes into account tissue factor, factor 7, calcium, factor 10, factor 5, prothrombin, factor 2, and fibrinogen, factor 1. Defects in any of the above factors prolong the prothrombin time. The prothrombin time does not detect factor 8, 9, or von Willenbrand factor. Often the PT is reported as an INR, the International Normalized Ratio, the ratio of actual time to clot formation to the normal or baseline time to clot formation. A higher INR means thinner blood. To test the intrinsic pathway, the test of choice is the activated partial thromboplastin time, which is measured from the time that calcium is inserted into the mixture to the time the clot forms. Normally, the clot will form in around 25 to 39 seconds. The activated partial thromboplastin time, the APTT, accounts for factor 12, precalocrine, high molecular weight kinenogen, factors 11, 9, 8, and calcium, and of course, the factors involved in the common pathway, factors 10, 5, 2, and 1. Deficiencies in any of these factors prolongs the APTT. 
Note that the APTT does not pick up tissue factor, factor 7, and factor 13 deficiencies. Now, why is it that a test that measures the intrinsic pathway is known as the partial thromboplastin time when thromboplastin is part of the extrinsic pathway? Because this test, the APTT, measures the partial thromboplastin time, not the thromboplastin time. Thromboplastin is actually a mixture of both phospholipids and tissue factor. Partial thromboplastin is made up of just phospholipids and not tissue factor. Finally, note that deficiencies in the common pathway involving factor 10, factor 5, factor 2, prothrombin, and factor 1, fibrinogen, will result in elevation of both the prothrombin time and the partial thromboplastin time. Elevations in any of these common laboratory tests signify prolonged bleeding. And that's all for today, everybody. This is quite a busy slide, so thank you for your attention. Again, if you have any thoughts about what slide topic I should do next, please let me know. And if you have any comments about the scientific and medical information presented on this slide, I'd love to hear from you. Do leave a comment down below. Again, please support us in our work by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video.